Mark chapter number 14, we're getting reading in verse number 42. Jesus has just concluded the third time he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. His three inner circle disciples, Peter, James, and John, he took with him. And like good uh, Baptists, even though they weren't Baptists, they fell asleep. Verse 42, the Bible says, Rise up, let us go, lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. As soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him, and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I appreciate that song Miss Crystal was sung. She sung it for years. Lord, I appreciate the, the words of that song. Lord, I pray that we will all be guilty of, Lord, serving you with all our heart and loving you with all our heart, and Lord, seeking you with all our heart. Lord, I think a lot of times we'll offer up lip service to that, but, Lord, our actions don't prove it. Lord, help us to seek your face instead of seeking your hand. Lord, I really appreciated her singing it tonight, knowing what she's facing, what she's going through, and yet she still offers up praise unto God. Lord, what a blessing. Now, Father, I thank you for the Word of God. Lord, I thank you that, Lord, you inspired it, you breathed it, you preserved it, and Lord, even when things don't seem relevant to us, Lord, it's your word, and when heaven and earth are set on fire, it'll still be able to be stood upon. And God, it's forever settled in heaven, and it is relevant to you. So Father, help us tonight. You know where we are. You know where we need to be. God, speak, and we'll bless you for it. For in the holy name of the Lord Jesus, we ask it all. Let me draw your attention to several things from this text. I want you to notice those who are accosting Jesus. Look with me again in verse number 43. The Bible says, And immediately, while he yet spake, come a Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords uh, and staves from the chief priests uh, and the scribes uh, and the elders. Uh, Notice the mob that has come out to accost the Lord Jesus. We find that one that was with him for three and a half years uh, saw every miracle he did, heard every message he preached, uh, ate of all the fish uh, uh, and the bread where he had little and he turned it into much. Uh, uh, he uh, uh, was with the Lord Jesus, yet uh, he's one that has come out to uh, uh, to accost him. Not only him, there's a great multitude. Uh, they come with swords and staves. Uh, they're of the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Uh, they've all come out to show themselves uh, uh, for who they really are. Uh, I've learned this. Uh, you stand on truth long enough. Uh, you let the fire of God fall on the truth long enough. Uh, you stand for righteousness. Uh, you stand for holiness. Uh, and before long, you'll see what people are made of. Uh, 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 listen, uh, those that are for the things of God, they'll salute, say hallelujah, and shout it on. Uh, but there are those that tend to get real ugly when you get real close to their sin. Uh, we find those that are costing Jesus. Uh, notice, if you will, uh, those that uh, the, the arrest of Jesus. Look at verse 46. Uh, and they laid their hands on him and took him. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, I see a whole lot of grace in that verse. Uh, 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 only a, a great loving God would allow sinful man to put his hands on him. Uh, but yet, uh, 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 he did. Now, this is not the woman with the issue of blood uh, who said, if I can touch but the hem 
hem of his garment I'll be made whole. Uh, when he said virtue went out of him. Uh, no, uh, these aren't folks coming to seek help. Uh, these are folks coming to lay their hands on the darling Son of God. Uh, uh, because how dare him uh, heal people on the Sabbath? How dare him uh, uh, claim that he and his father are one? Uh, how dare him call them a generation of vipers? Uh, they've come out to show him. Uh, but neighbor, listen, uh, at the great white throne judgment, uh, uh, we'll see what happens to that crowd. Uh, uh, they'll realize uh, uh, they should not have put their hands on the Son of God. Uh, we see uh, the accosting of Jesus. We see the arrest of Jesus. But notice the abandonment of Jesus. Can I say, first of all, there's the deserter in this text. Judas betrayed him. A few hours uh, prior to this, uh, they were having what we call the Last Supper uh, when the Lord Jesus uh, uh, tells his disciples one of them was going to betray him. Uh, 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 and we know that when Judas went out, uh, Jesus told him which he would do, do it quickly. Uh, and he went out and he sold the Lord Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. We see the betrayer, Judas. He says, the one that I kiss, that's him. Huh? Can I say that Jesus uh, 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 lets them know later in the text, uh, hey, uh, I was with you daily in the temple. You didn't come with me in swords and staves. Uh, how can he preach to them daily in the temple and them not know who he is? Judas has put a little extra emphasis on this. Judas goes up and kisses him on the cheek, and the Lord calls him friend. Yet Judas is already in his heart betrayed him. He's the deserter. Hmm. Uh, Jesus didn't mean much to him. Hmm, Thirty pieces of silver. Not only do we find the deserter, we find the, dis the disciples abandoned him. Now again, in that same supper just a few hours earlier, Peter said, uh, I'll go with you if, even if I have to die. I'll go with you all the way to death. Uh, and uh, it, later it said, and so said all the disciples. Uh, all of them said, we're with you, Lord, all the way, even to death. But we're there. But look, if you will, in verse number 50. And they all forsook him and fled. Can I say tonight you can stand up and say, I'm for the Lord all the way. I'll never turn on the Lord. I, I, I love the Lord. And the Lord is first place in my life. You better be careful. You see, it's easy to say that in here. There's no adversity. I wonder when you're out in the, the Walmart, have you fled the Lord? Have you abandoned him? And you're still standing strong. Uh, I wonder, when nobody's looking in you on your phone, young person, have you abandoned the Lord? I wonder on the job. I wonder at school. I'm talking about the 11 disciples. I'm talking about the ones who will be heralded in heaven. They all forsook him and fled we see the deserter Judas abandon him we see the disciples abandon him but then we come to that obscure part that I had never really paid any attention to that had me scratching my head can I say that there is a dazed individual who abandons him Look in verse number 51. I never paid any attention to this, but here it is. It said, And there followed him a certain young man, having a linen cloth cast about his naked body, and the young man laid hold on him, and, uh, and the young man laid hold on him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. Well, why is that in the Bible? I don't know. Everything I read about this says that this young man, no doubt, lives somewhere around the Garden of Gethsemane. 
And he was asleep because the linen cloth that they're talking about is what they used for what we would call bed sheet. And he heard a multitude coming through, and he wondered, what in the world is all this racket about? So he jumps up, throws the cloth around him, and goes to see, and the young men, is talking about the young uh, 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 men that were in the mob, they laid hands on him, uh, and uh, he left his garment and fled. This fellow is confused. <laughs> He's bewildered. Can I say something about this fellow? He's faceless. We don't know who he is. He's all fuzzy. He don't know what's going on. Why are they arresting this man? But you know what he does? Same thing the disciples and Judas did. He flees. Isn't that what the Bible said? And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. So we see that Judas fled him. We see the disciples fled him. And we see this nameless guy here flees him. I'm going to preach with God's help on fleeing Jesus. Can I ask this question? What has Jesus ever done for you? And then what has Jesus ever done to you? If you're here tonight, you're born again, Jesus has done the most wonderful thing for you anybody could do for you. He saved you. He changed your eternal life. We spend so much time thinking about the temporary. Boy, the Lord's given me a better life. The Lord's blessed me. The Lord's going. Do you realize that this life is just a drop of water in a bucket compared to eternal life? Everything that we go through in this life is to prepare us for eternal life. And Jesus changed more than your uh, 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 condition in this life. He changed it for all of eternity. So if Jesus has done that for you, what has he ever done to you? Has Jesus ever treated anybody wrong? Has Jesus ever done ill to anybody? Has Jesus ever forsaken anybody? Has Jesus ever fled from you? Then why would we flee from him? Yet so many do. Can I say that if everybody was here that was just members of our church, we'd have a pack house. Where are they at? Now, some are sick. We got a rule around here. You got the gank, stay home with. We don't want the gank. Huh? I understand if you're sick. Some people are providentially hindered. I understand why Miss May Perry's not here. Trust me, if she was able bodied, she would probably be one of the first ones here. I understand that. But it's just like when Jesus healed the ten lepers and the one came back and worshipped him, he said, Where are the nine? We're not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Where are folks? Why have they fled Jesus? What has he ever done to them? Here's the problem, Brother Ray. Listen, well, I didn't flee Jesus. I just had this, 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 this. But is not Jesus the living word? And did he not give us the written word? And did he not say, not forsake the assembling of ourselves together? Huh? So much more as you see the day approaching. What day? His return? If there's any time we need to be in church, it's now. Huh? But you see, when we forsake His Word and we forsake His church, we're forsaking Him. I didn't even got to the message and some of you are sweating bullets. Well, hang on, neighbor. You know me, God gives me a message, I'll preach it or die. Can I say that some flee Him because of fear. Can I say that those 11 disciples fled because of fear? 
That young man fled because of fear. They were fearful for their own life. Don't you realize that Jesus is the life? Don't you realize that if they would have hung out and said, we're just going to follow you, don't you think he would have taken care of them? He had a job for them to do. But they fled because of fear. Can I say there are people who will flee the Lord for fear of persecution? That's why some of you will come to church uh, and you'll hit the altar, young people, but at school you won't mention anything about Jesus because you're afraid of what they'll say about you. Got real quiet right there, didn't it? Where's all that shouting from camp meeting you when you all was at camp last year? It's true. Well, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm just, you know, afraid to say anything because, you know, uh, they come down on kids that say anything about Jesus. Hmm? Let them come down on it. You've only got the Constitution, even better than that, the Bible, even better than that, the Lord Jesus behind you. Why are you fleeing Him? Hmm? How many of you go to public school? What grade are you in, kids? 11th. Do you realize two years from now you're never going to see any of them kids you go to school with? So why are you afraid of them? But you know who's going to be there? Jesus. Hmm? Huh? Listen, I've been out of school 40-something years. I've never seen anybody I went to school with. Huh? The only reason I'm reminded about where I went to school is because those two right there, huh? they didn't have any more sense to go to a better school than I did. Huh? But seriously, Sid, how many, you see Maddie, that's the only kid you see from high school. Hmm? Why are we so afraid of what people think, but we're not afraid of what Jesus thinks? Hmm? Does he not say, not to fear them that can kill the body, but rather fear him that can destroy the body and soul in hell? Shouldn't we fear him more than we do uh, our, our, uh, our, our peers? Huh? We're so afraid of persecution. Well, I'm afraid to tell my family that I'm going to church, so I'll stay home with them. Hmm? It's kind of later in the message, but I might as well say it now. Jesus said, if you love father or mother more than me or son or daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. Right. Amen. I love my family. You all know that. But I'm going to get in big time trouble if I start loving them more than I love Jesus. Yeah. Mm -mm. some flee because of fear of persecution some flee because of fear of, uh, of purpose their, their commitments, their obligations you know, they don't want to upset any of that you know what your obligations and commitment ought to be? the house of God, the Lord Jesus first mm -hmm. if more people that claim to be Christian would tell the ball teams and tell the schoolhouses and tell everybody else, uh, I'm going to be at church when it's church time. Uh, you know what? They'd start changing the times they have everything else. You know why they have things on church time? Because nobody makes a stand anymore. I remember when my boys played, they asked my boys to lead in prayer before the teams. Well, we can't have prayer in schools anymore, but it'll upset people. Huh? Well, upset them then. Maybe somebody will get born again. Can I say Jesus said he didn't come to bring peace to this world, but a sword? Can I say that you and I are not in some playpen? We're on a battlefield, and we're to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. But if we can't even muster enough to get to the house of God, how in the world can we fight this fight of faith? Thank you, Brother Phil. I'm going to preach it or die. I got seven more points. Buckle up. Huh? Or suck it up, buttercup, whichever one. Some flee because of fear of per persecution, fear of purpose, but also some flee because of proof of identity. They don't want to be identified with Christ. You know why a lot of people want to go to a big church so nobody knows if they're there or not there? You know who knows? Jesus. 
He's taking an inventory. Matter of fact, he's keeping a record book. Hmm. And nobody slides on his records. Hmm. And I say some flee because of fear. And I say others flee because of folly. The pleasures of sin for a season mean more to them than Jesus. Some of them just, just so much folly. Well, preacher, you know, we can't come to church because, you know, we bought tickets to go see this. You better be more concerned about your ticket to heaven. Hmm? Well, I, I just need some downtime. No, what you need is Jesus. You need to be down with Jesus. Hmm? Uh, listen, if I could give you the excuses I get from people for why they come, can't come to church, I mean, it infuriates me. I can't imagine what it does to the Lord. You know, the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Uh, and by the way, he's not that little sad-looking picture that you think that Jesus... He's got eyes as flames of fire, friend. Uh, he's coming back in the, in the indignation and wrath of Almighty God when he literally comes back to this earth. He's not coming back to be lovey-dovey. And by the way, he's not going to be lovey-dovey at the judgment seat of Christ either. Mm. You better make up your mind. Come what may, I'm going to do everything that I can by the grace of God, not to flee Jesus. Is that preacher? I've already made that commitment. I'm going to tell you, if the, if the 11 disciples fled him, when they thought their hide was in danger, you'll flee him too. Hmm? Huh? How much have you prayed this week? Hmm? I've been announcing we got revival meeting for months. Some of you haven't even thought about it. Some of you have made plans. Well, I can't be there this night or that night or that night. I hope that's the night the rapture happens. You face Jesus not being in the house of God. Hmm? He said, Preacher, that's really cruel. You ought to really see what's going on in my mind right now. That was real sweet. Uh, I'm telling you, some fleeing because they're just looking for a good time. And I say the best times I ever have is in church. Uh, you say, you really think the best times in church? Oh, yeah. If you plugged into Jesus, it would be the best time of your life, too. Uh, can I say? Some fleeing because of fear. Some because of folly. Some fleeing because they're, they're a fledgling. That's a fancy word for saying they're a novice or a babe in Christ. Let me help you something. Just getting saved makes you a babe in Christ. But you can be saved 30 years and never get in the Bible, never grow in the things of God, and still be a babe in Christ. Uh, there's something wrong if you've been saved 30 years and you still got a pacifier in your mouth. Something wrong. Something wrong if you've got to make up your mind whether or not you come to church, make up your mind whether or not you're going to pay your tithes, make up your mind whether you're going to put Jesus first, make up your mind whether you're going to read the Bible, whether whether you're going to pray, whether you're going to be a part of the church. There's something wrong. Uh, I understand folks just getting saved. The Lord's working on them. Uh, folks first get saved, they, they don't instantly get cleaned up. They, sometimes it takes the Spirit of God working on them. I understand that. But if you've been so-called saved 30 years and you still don't know what time church is, I, I, I'm telling it, Brother Phil. There's something wrong. You better do some checking up. You might have fled Jesus or you might not even know him. You say, well, I went, I went and joined the church. That don't mean you know him. Well, I signed a card. That don't mean you know him. I got baptized. That don't mean you know him. Uh, he said that in, in the last days, many would say to him, and he would say, Depart from me, ye that worked iniquity. I never knew you. Uh, there's a difference between being religious and being saved. Judas was religious. Judas kissed the cheek to heaven and died and went to hell. 
Can I say some flee because they're fledgling? Can I say some flee because they're firm? You say, what do you mean? They're stubborn. They're willful. They're going to have their way. I'm not going to have that preacher tell me anything. Well, you better let that Bible tell you something. No. Uh, you be stubborn, prideful, arrogant. Hmm? There's some people so arrogant, their nose is so high in the air, if it got caught up in the rain, they drown, huh? People so arrogant in church that if they was to cry, it'd run down their neck, the back of it, with their heads up in the air, huh? There's some people, a GPS couldn't get them to the altar, do business with God. They're so full of pride, huh? so opinionated hmm? yeah, God help us some people fled Jesus because they're full of pride now, I'm not going to follow him I'm not going to be around that bloody mess I'm not going to watch him be crucified I'm not going to do it I'll do it my way your, my, your way might not be the right way I'm just saying some fleeing Jesus hmm? some are fleeing Jesus because they're fallen they're sinful. Hmm. By the way, the Bible says for him to know it to do good and do it not to him it is sin. You can be fallen sitting on church pew. You can be out of the will of God sitting in the church house. Hmm. Some are fallen. He said, well, somebody that's really saved couldn't get out of the will of God. Well, read on and see what happens to Peter. Peter chopped off Malchus's ear. Jesus puts the guy's ear back on. I don't understand how you can lay hands on somebody, arrest them when he just put it, your ear back on your head. I don't understand. I'm talking about you're full of the devil. You are so bent against Jesus that even when he does a miracle, you're going to arrest him. It's kind of like that crowd that's so bent against Trump. They will ignore the laws of the land to see ill brought to that man just because they hate him. You know why they hate him? Because he loves America. Amen. So that's it in a nutshell. Why else would he put himself through all that he's went through? Huh? I really believe he loves America. And I really believe he loves a fight. He's like, bring it on. They did reduce that ridiculous bail, which will get thrown out once it gets to the Supreme Court, but they reduced it from 400-something million to 150 million. They asked him, how's he going to pay for it? He said, cash. I like it. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say this. Got to lighten the mood because some of you are about to die. I seen where he made the statement, boy, he's got the liberals upset, said America's got to get back to praying, reading the Bible, and seeking God. I said, Glory. And then Lee Greenwood gave him a Bible. And the Bible, the cover of it, has uh, that song Lee Greenwood sang, uh, God Bless the USA. But it was the King James Bible. And Trump said, when you read the Bible, you need to read this Bible, the King James Bible. That's what he said. So I ordered one of them Bibles. Lee Greenwood's got them available. <laughs> 60 bucks, I got it. It's coming. You say, why in the world did you do that? Just because it did. If it makes the liberals mad, I'm for it. Uh, uh, listen, Trump's not perfect, and Trump can't save America. The only hope for America is Jesus. And I want to tell you something. Some of you thought I was crazy in 2020 when I was telling you all the truth about COVID. You can apologize to me after service. I was right. Everything I said was right. Uh, but can I say this? We might not make it to the election. If you think that ship running into that bridge in Baltimore was just an accident, do you understand the ramification? 1.30 in the morning, where was the harbor master? A harbor master has to bring that ship into port. Where's that at? But look at the video. That ship was on fire before it hit the bridge. Something went on there. Now here's the whole deal. 
Do you see all the ships waiting to get in that harbor? Wonder what's on them ships. Everything you're buying from Amazon and Timu and everything that comes from China and everywhere else. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be back to uh, we got supply chain shortages. You're going to have to depend on the government to get through now. Some of them are going down to Virginia. How long is it going to be before all those goods get here? I wonder how many, how many cars are on those ships. I wonder how many uh, 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 things of clothing and uh, all kinds of stuff that we need that makes America fat and sassy. They're on them ships. Well, how long is it going to be before it hit port? I'm just telling you, there's a lot of things going on in America right now to stop this election from ever, ever counting. Huh? Things get so bad, the government can call for martial law. We won't have an election. Hmm? Can I say, in my lifetime, I do not remember a president being voted out while we, were at, while we were at an act of war. And by the way, a lot of evidence to it. A lot of these illegal border crossings are young men that are from China. We keep worrying about China shooting off a nuclear. They might be sending men across here to take over our country from within. That Trojan horse is happening at the border. Now, I'm just telling you, America's in bad shape, and Trump can't fix it. Why do you think they're fighting against that guy? So they don't, they don't want him to fix it. They don't want him to even say anything. But I'm telling you, the only hope we got is Jesus. And if we're fleeing Jesus for our folly and for all this other junk, what, what kind of help is there really for America? Do you realize independent, fundamental, Bible-believing churches are the last line of defense for America? And people are fleeing Jesus. Can I say? Some are fleeing because they've lost focus. You're too interested in what's on TV and what's down at the restaurant and heaven help you, what's at the mall. Then you are Jesus. We're all out of focus. Our minds are on everything else. <laughs> heaven help you if you was into March Madness. Kentucky blew your back bracket, didn't it? You know, it's the first year I can remember. I didn't fill out a back bracket. I never play them. I just fill them out and see how good I am. I didn't watch one college basketball game this year, so I wasn't going to fill out a bracket. Huh? Boy. Go Oakland. Huh? Let me go talk to my friend Dawn. It's not going to come to pass, but last week there was some steam saying that Louisville and Bob Huggins might be a match. Can you imagine Thad if they hired Bob Huggins? As much as he hated Bob Huggins as a UC coach, if I, I, was, I was praying for that. I said, oh, give Huggins a job. Poor man needs a job. <laughs> no, I think they're going to give it to Pat Kelsey. Good guy. Huh? But people are all consumed with this stuff, and the world's going to hell. Yeah. We've just lost focus. It's a true story. It's a true story. If I'm lying, I'm dying right here. Huh? Used to little remember this. I'll never forget. At my grandfather's church, we'd always take up prayer requests. And then we'd pray. I'll never forget. The men had already stood up, getting ready to go to the altar to pray, and this lady gives a prayer request. Now, I was probably 12, 13. And so she's giving a prayer request. And she's talking about this lady's got a brain tumor. And back then, somebody got a brain tumor. I mean, that's a death sentence. I mean, you know, I mean, everybody's gasping. Everybody's all concerned and, and everything. And she's going on, giving this prayer request going on. And she says, 
but I got to wait till Monday to see what happens. She's talking about somebody on a soap opera. But she was as serious as a heart attack. Well, then when she said that, I didn't have much praying on me. Huh? That's a true story. But I'm telling you, that's how out of focus people get. They're consumed with a goofy soap opera. By the way, Bachelor in Paradise isn't real. Reality TV isn't real. Even the NFL isn't real anymore. It's flag football now with some of the new rules. I'm just saying people get so consumed with junk, they're fleeing Jesus. I told Miss Annette back last year when all these betting sites came out, I'm thinking, how are they going to keep this, you know, keep the players from getting involved in this? Well, guess what's came out in the last two weeks? A baseball player and an NBA player caught betting on the games. Well, hey, you, you put it on their phones. I mean, you, you got cool people advertising. I wonder how many Baptists play those betting games. You know, gambling's a sin. Huh? Let me say it again. Gambling's a sin. Playing the lottery is a sin because you're not living by faith. And anything that's not faith is sin. Huh? Boy, we got real popular right there. Well, preacher, if I win the lottery, I'll pay my tithes. You're not paying them now. Why would you pay them then? I'm just saying, folks, his focus is wrong. You know why you're not a billionaire? Because God couldn't trust you with it. Uh, well, God help us. Can I say some are fleeing Jesus because they choose to feast on other things than to feast at his table? Can I say there's nothing like manna from heaven? There's nothing more beautiful than seeing those two teenagers get saved Sunday morning. Mm. Uh, Hollywood can't come up with anything that wonderful. Mm. No. But yet, there are people that would rather feast on Hollywood than the things of God. I read this today. One of these big outfits, one of these non-denominational window-washing churches, What's the window washing church? That's where I was standing in the congregation doing this. They said they purposely want to take the gospel farther than it's ever been, but they don't want to offend people. So in their Sunday services, they're not going to use terms like crucifixion, resurrection, blood, or Christ. And can I say the person that I was reading after is a very conservative Christian and says that is appalling to fundamental churches. Yet many of the people sitting in the fundamental churches listen to the very music that that same crowd promotes. It's okay to listen to songs that deny the blood, but you won't have it in your churches. We've got to preach the blood. I want to tell you something. If you have no crucifixion, no blood, no resurrection, no Christ, you have no Jesus. And if those terms offend you, well, you aren't sitting here tonight. I guarantee you that. God help us. But we got folks sitting in fundamental churches that will listen to their garbage rather than come and feast from truth thought about this some people are fleeing Jesus because they're more fond of something other than Jesus I had no idea Miss Krista would sing that song tonight she said with all my heart I want to love you Lord. but yet there are so many fleeing Jesus because they're more fond of something else 
other than Jesus. Perhaps they're more fond of their family. Done told you. You love father, mother, son, or daughter more than me. You're not worthy of me. That's what Jesus said. Say, preacher, my family's got a family reunion on Sunday. I can't be at church. Tell your family, have it on Saturday or you'll see them next year. Who's more important, your family or Jesus? Preacher, we got a birthday party on Sunday. Well, tell them I'll be there between 2 and 5, but uh, I'm at church. What's wrong with having your family reunion at church? Have your family come to church with you. What's wrong with coming to church and then having your birthday party? Huh? Oh, we got a baby shower. Well, what's wrong with having it when it's not church time? Hmm? Or going when, it, when you get out of church. Be a little late. Hmm? What's wrong with that? Huh? Pre- preacher, we got to have this big dinner. What's wrong with feasting at the Lord's house and then having dinner afterwards? Huh? Well, preacher, it's my family. Which is more important, Jesus or your family? It's a preacher. You don't really act that way. You asked Miss Annette where I was last, last Monday night on our wedding anniversary. I was preaching the gospel. She told me, go preach the gospel. I love her more than life itself. But Jesus called me to do a job. My job is to honor him. My life is his. It's been bought with a price. We had a wonderful series on the doors of opportunity. Maybe the Lord doesn't have many doors for you because you're too busy fleeing Him. Some are more fond of their family than they are Jesus. Some are more fond of their friends than they are Jesus. Some are more fond of their personal freedom, their own choice. They love the idea of being saved, but they want the luxury of living however they want to live. There's only one problem with that. That's not Bible. Again, we've been bought with a price, the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our life is no longer our own. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Uh, used to be bound by sin. Used to be a slave to sin. Uh, once you got saved, uh, you got a new master. His name is Jesus. Uh, 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 you do not have the choice to live however you want to. You're to live as Christ. But I want my choices, my freedoms. I know people think that it's okay if they just gather with their family and have a little Bible study instead of coming to church. There's only one problem. That's not scriptural. We've been called out from this world to be separate. And the church is a called out assembly of baptized believers. Uh, And here is where God chooses to meet with his people. Not at the lake, not the living room, uh, not wherever you think. Hmm? So we had a little devotion, had prayer, but there's one thing you didn't have. His name is Jesus. Hmm? I'm not. I'm understand why God had me preach this. We got revival in two weeks. Hmm? They're more fond of falseness than they are Jesus. They're more fond of fatuity or vanity than they are Jesus. Therefore, they flee Jesus. Now, this is a message you can't answer for tomorrow. Because, see, there aren't people with swords and staves coming at you tonight. Some things we won't know till the pressure's on. I've heard people say, well, I'm going to... I'm willing to die for Jesus. He didn't ask you to do that. He asked you to live for him. But there may come a day when we might have to be willing to die for our faith. I promise you this, if folks can't make it out on Wednesday night prayer meeting, they won't die for their faith. I'm just going to tell you that right now. There's something called conviction. I'm 
I'm talking about deep down conviction where you will not deny the Lord that will cause you to die for it. And we won't know how deep that conviction goes till we're put to that test. But I can say this. How about tonight? Are you with Jesus? Or have you fled him? Maybe you're guilty of fleeing him. Are you willing to do something about it? See, sometimes, Colonel, a message like this makes people feel bad because they know they haven't done right. So they experience something called remorse. Well, that doesn't change the situation. The only thing that's going to reconcile what has been broken between you and Jesus is something called repentance. Where you come and you confess that you have forsaken him. You ask him to forgive you. And then, by the grace of God, with determination, you have the mindset, I'm never going to do that again. That's turning from it. That's repentance. Now on down the road, we can't see. We don't have a looking glass. You may fail him again. But he is a long-suffering God that will allow you to repent again. But you can't uh, come with the mindset, well, I'll just do it again. He'll forgive me again. Now, that's not repentance. Hmm? What can I say? If you have not lived up to what Jesus would have you to live up, I'm glad that he said if we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you'll repent... He'll restore you. If you have fled, Jesus is so wonderful that he puts his arms wide open and says, you can come back. And when Jesus forgives you, he forgets it. I wonder tonight, have you fled him or have you been right there with him? Have you put somebody else before him, or has he been first? Matthew 6, 31, still in the Bible, through verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every, all these other things he'll add to you. We're still to put Jesus first. Huh? Your family second, and then everything else just falls in line. Hmm? But if you're not careful, you'll get everything out of order. That's why we have revival meetings. Get everything back where it's supposed to be. Well, maybe a revival meeting will start tonight. If we just admit that we put things before Jesus, that we've loved things more than we've loved Jesus, that we haven't done right by Jesus. Listen, the Bible said they all forsook him. If we're honest, there's been times when we haven't been what we should be for Jesus. Have you made it right? If not, tonight might be your night. Matter of fact, I highly recommend it. I told Brother Josh on Monday, this may be the last revival meeting we ever get to see. We better get serious about it. The Lord is coming. If you can't see this thing winding down, something's wrong with you. It seems like about every three months, the wealthiest and the elites of the whole world meet together on some island discussing some secret things. You say, what are they d discussing? How the world's going to be run when the Antichrist takes over. They're not interested in you and I. They're trying to survive by putting us through the, the, the mill. My dear friend, this thing's winding down wonder what the next big push will be. We've seen what COVID did. What's the next thing? There were folks that fled Jesus during COVID. Still hadn't got back. I wonder tonight, are you fleeing Jesus? Have you fled Jesus? Or are you following Jesus? Can I say? Where I come from, they used to say proof's in the pudding. If you're following, it'll be known of you. But if you've fled him, you can't even hold your head up right now. Because you know, you've not done right by Jesus.
not done right by his church. You just not done right. Why don't you get it made right tonight? Let's all stand, Brother Clint. You come. They're coming to pick out a song. Maybe you're following him. Why don't you come pray for folks that have it? Folks that's fled. Folks that's fallen. Maybe you need to come tonight. Pray for somebody to get saved this Sunday. I don't know. I know a message like this requires a decision. The folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, thank you for the word of God. God, forgive us where we have fled. Lord, there have been times we just didn't flee. We ran as hard as we could. God, forgive us. God, have mercy. God, help us to follow you. God, give us grace and strength and grit to follow you, to bear our cross. Lord, I'm remembering that message you gave and those crosses we laid out here and people picked them up. I wonder if they're still bearing their cross. God, speak to hearts. Lord, there are souls at stake. Lord, there's a battle being fought. Help us to stand and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Help us to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Help us, Lord, to be all we can be in Christ. So when you do appear, we won't be ashamed. Father, bless now. Bless this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn away. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.